Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. On the Harry and Meghan story, the UK's public cannot have it both ways. If someone wrote Cinderella's tale today, her character might not wait around for a prince to come and save her. She would instead be given a career and aspire to financial independence. In the Me Too era, if Sleeping Beauty woke up with a kiss that she did not consent to, whether or not from a prince, she might well tell him off. Yet, instead of refraining these stories for a modern era, we have accepted them. For one, it is hard to escape the trap of outdated values if we keep telling ourselves obsolete stories. Which brings us to the modern-day fairy tale of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and their move to step back from royal duties. Although at first glance, this appears to be about a prince, the real story is our reactions, attitudes and the way we have perceived and framed this narrative in our minds. Racism has been at the heart of the couple's story. That much is evident in the headlines and discussions around their recent announcement to step back and how that news has been framed. The most notable thing about racism is perhaps the denial of it, crouching it in different ways, for example, Lainey M's Markle, calling her ungrateful and accusing her of not understanding the ways of her new family or the expectations of society. These are commonplace racist tropes. The truth is that this narrative could have been framed differently. It could have been written in terms of an upgrade to modernity and a need for change, touching upon the bravery and courage needed to break from tradition. Also, overcoming racial bias of judging a person for who they are and not by their skin color. In the case of Anne's Markle, the sexism has also been brutal. She was denigrated for being divorced, successful, and having a career, all age-old misogynistic stereotypes. She was pitted against her sister-in-law, Kate Middleton. Most distastefully, Ems Markle was blamed, as wives often are, for allegedly taking her husband away from his family and heritage. Again, we could be recounting this story in a different way. We could have said, Wife gives husband the courage of his convictions to take the brave step away from the royal family, something he had wanted to do since his mother's death. Instead of the misogynistic coverage of her desire to bow out of royal duties, we could have been celebrating multi-faceted women and their opinions, interests and talents. This also did a disservice to Prince Harry. It cast him as weak, and under his wife's spell, when he deserved better. Imagine if the story told was of a devoted husband, respectful of his marriage, of a man who treats his wife as an equal and prioritizes his family. The whole incident is a lesson in framing stories, how we perceive them, and how that shapes who we are and the societies we live in. In the UK, we talk of a more streamlined monarchy with a smaller budget to support it, but we are outraged at this proactive withdrawal from the monarchy and a step toward financially independence. People in Britain want the monarchy to represent a modern nation, but do not want it to lead by example. The awful reactions to this incident are cause for despair, but it is also a chance to press the reset button. Maybe we are not brave enough to break with the ideas holding us back. Maybe we just want to be angry at someone. We fall prey to hysteria, but we can do things differently. We can do things better if only we learn the lessons from this sorry saga and begin to tell the story differently. President Donald Trump weighed in on Mexit, expressing condolences for Queen Elizabeth after news quickly spread that her grandson and his wife would step back from their roles as senior members of the British royal family. Can we ask you about the trip to begin with? How yes. much are you looking forward to it? You're bringing most of your family, most I'm of your children? Uh, some of my family. Uh, they're going to be there and we will, I think it's uh, greatly honored by the trip yeah. and it'll be great seeing the Queen for the second time. Yeah. We had a very good talk the first one. 
we had a lot of interesting things to say. Yeah. Uh, it really was a great visit. And I think you're meeting some other royal family members, Prince Charles, who's giving uh, you some Prince tea. Prince Charles the following day, yeah. evening, evening. Yeah. And uh, he'll be joining us and we'll be joining him and it'll be, I think that's very good. I've met Charles before, I like Charles. Yeah. Now Prince Charles, he's a, he's a big fan of um, tackling climate change. Well, we'll be talking, we'll be talking. Uh, I can say we have among the cleanest climate in the world right yeah. now, our air and our water, we're doing very well. Yeah. Uh, up, meaning up positively in the last two years. Yes. And we're doing very well on climate. Yeah. We uh, hope that other countries can do so well. You know, it's a big, it's a big atmosphere. And frankly, if one country is going to be bad and another yeah. country is going to be good, the country that's good gets penalized, which isn't fair. You know, so, and we have a lot of countries that are not living up to a high standard, but we are. Now, uh, Meghan, who's now the Duchess of Sussex, Sussex right. uh, we've given her a different name, she can't make it because she's got maternity leave. Are you sorry not to see her because she wasn't so nice about you during the campaign? I don't know if you saw that. I don't, I didn't know that, no. Yeah. I didn't know that. No, I, I hope she's okay. Uh, I did not know that, no. She said she'd move to Canada if you got elected. Turned out she moved to Britain. Well, that would be good. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people moving here. So, what can I say? No, I didn't know that she was nasty. Is it good having an American princess then, Mr. President? Is that well, I think sort it's, of help the links? I think it's nice. I think it's nice. And I'm sure she'll do uh, excellently. She'll be, uh, she'll be very good. She'll be very good. I hope she does. Another report. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle are just starting the next chapter of their lives as private citizens. The two are settling into their new home of Vancouver Island, British Columbia, and they are reportedly temporarily staying in a massive, waterfront mansion. It's clear that the two are no longer spending their days attending royal engagements. Here is what they're doing instead. Harry and Meghan are officially private citizens. It was the shock heard around the world but now it's official. Harry and Meghan are no longer part of the royal family. Though they are still known as the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, these two royals have moved across the pond and settled down on Vancouver Island in British Columbia. There have been reports that the royal family doesn't have faith in Meghan and Harry's lives as private citizens. There is supposedly some concern that they won't be able to handle the paparazzi and media attention without the massive security blanket over in the United Kingdom. But for now, they're enjoying their somewhat more private lives. Meghan was recently seen hiking with Archie and her dogs. There are many things for the couple to do on Vancouver Island, and it's definitely known for its outdoor activities. The island, despite being far north, typically stays above freezing year-round, which makes it easy for people to take advantage of hiking trails throughout the year. Megan was recently spotted hiking around her home alongside Archie and her two dogs, and she was only wearing a light jacket and workout clothes. The couple, who try to live an active, healthy lifestyle, will probably spend a lot of their time hiking now that they've made the move. The couple will likely tour North Sonich's many sites, there are plenty of ways for Meghan and Harry to spend their days now that they're living somewhere so much quieter. North Sonich, where the couple is currently living, is home to an aviation museum, aquarium, and plenty of trails as well as wineries, and Meghan does love relaxing with a glass of wine. The two will likely continue to live an active lifestyle day to day, while allowing Archie to develop a closer relationship with nature, the two probably won't experience much privacy while in Canada, though. As far as the paparazzi goes, the two are protected in the UK. The same rules don't apply in Canada. Though the family might want to spend their days out in the open, they could end up hiding more than they realize. The two plan to still continue their philanthropic work. Though Harry and Meghan definitely want to explore their new neighborhood, they still plan to continue their philanthropic work. Harry has been serving the people his whole life, 
and he doesn't plan to stop just because the two have moved. They will likely start working with more North American charities, while still keeping their UK organizations close. The two have said they will also still visit the UK regularly, despite living in North America. So there you have it, that's all the news on Meghan and Prince Harry situation today. As always, thanks for listening. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and press that notification bell if you want to be notified of future videos. Thank you. Don't stop.